Hello students, I'm your Bhushan sir. Hope all of you are fine and safe at home. Take care of your health during this pandemic time. Today, we shall understand another phylum of non-cardata namely phylum Nematoda. It is also called as phylum Ashhelminthes or Nemathelminthes. So the objectives of the present session is to describe the characteristics of nematodes and to understand the beneficial and uh, parasitic nematodes. Contents includes the study of general characteristics of the phylum nematoda with examples. The term nematoda is derived from two Greek terms, nema and idos. Nema means thread, idos means forms. So, nematoda refers to thread like worms or round worms. As they have cylindrical, elongated, small, and segmented round body. They are called as roundworms. Due to the small size, they are also commonly called as pinworms. It was before the actual scientific study of these worms, a former belief was that these worms were looking like elongated dust sac like structures which were internally filled with uh, some fluid matter. Hence, were named as sac worms. The Greek term then used was ash helminthes, where ascos means sac, helminthes means um, worms. Students, there is still an ambiguity related to the name of this particular phylum, but as per the syllabus of yours. Uh, we need to uh, mention it as nematodes. Uh, uh, I hope it is clear now. Well, now we shall look into the general characteristics of phylum nematoda. As we have understood in the earlier sessions that general characteristics refers to the common features which are related to this particular group of organisms of nematodes. To start with the first one, the habitat and habit. Students remember habit refers to the general appearance of an animal, habitat refers to the dwelling place or living place of this particular organisms. When we look at these animals of nematodes, they are widely distributed. So, the distribution is very wide and they have an elongated body which is like worms, lives in places which are said to be free living or it could be parasitic, it could be aquatic and it could be even terrestrial. So, we have all the modes of distribution of these organisms. The animal that lives in the um, aquatic condition is Triconilla spiralis. We have Triconilla varieties, but here Triconilla um, spiralis is an aquatic form which lives in the water infecting the animals that lives in the uh, water. They are also terrestrial, mean to say they live on the land, inside the soil. So, we have soil nematodes. One major soil nematode that we have is Cynorhabditis, which is commonly called as Rhabditis organism or C. elegans organism. It is a non-infectious, non-pathogenic and non-parasitic nematode 
which commonly feeds on the microbes uh, amidst the uh, vegetation which gets rotten. If you look at the agricultural fields, after the harvest, the plants will be left like that uh, and uh, the plants after the uh, removal will be thrown in a place. In that place, it undergoes rotting or decomposing. Students remember that is the place where the Cynorhabditis uh, uh, elegans or C. elegans lives feeding on the microbes that uh, 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 causes the decomposition there. Then we also have the organisms of uh, parasitic and free living. Free living the example is again Cynorhabditis elegans, you know why? Because it lives freely in the uh, soil. It does not depend on the other organism for its survival. Whereas, we do have the parasitic organisms of nematodes. So, parasites are the animals which will depend on the host organisms for their survivability. So, when we look at um, the platyhelminthes, there we have learned that fasciola hepatica or the liver fluke or tinea solium, the tapeworm, they are all the organisms which come under the parasites. So, here also we do have nematodes including the uh, group of organisms that depends on the host called as the parasites. We have many parasites in the uh, 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 human beings also. For example, Ascaris lumbricoides. This is uh, uh, commonly called as the roundworm which is uh, responsible for causing the obstructions in the intestine upon the infections. When they infect the body, they tend to cause the abnormalities related to the intestinal functions. They also affect the normal function of uh, um, a pancreas. So, we call it as a prank, uh, pancreatitis. So, it causes the uh, uh, damage to the pancreas organ also. They do, call, uh, they do cause the uh, infectious jaundice. So, there are few uh, uh, symptoms related to the infection of Ascaris into the human body. So, something like that we do have parasites like uh, Ucheraria bancrafti, which is uh, commonly uh, causes the lymphatic filariasis or elephantiasis. You might have seen the people with the bulged uh, uh, legs like that of the elephants. So, this is caused by the filarial worm, a nematode. So, like this we have varieties or group of parasitic nematodes under the phylum. The next is shape. Coming on to the shape of these organisms as we know, they have elongated body which is cylindrical, having cube shaped body. Uh, uh, showing the anterior and the posterior ends. The body is unsegmented, it is not divided, it looks like a worm and both the ends even though it is tube like both ends are tapering. So, we, it has tapering ends, it has cylindrical body which is unsegmented, it is elongated worm like the body is very soft. Coming on to the body organization aspects, it shows organ system grade of body organization. So, in previous sessions we have understood body organization or grade of body organization refers to how the body of the animal will function uh, with reference to uh, the physiology. Here organs many together uh, functions for one physiology. For example, there are many organs involved for a digestive system, many organs are involved for a reproductive system, many organs are involved for the uh, excretory system. Likewise, many organs when they together function for a particular physiology, the grade of body organization we call it as organ system grade of body organization. For example, in the diagram here, the digestive system contains the mouth. Then it shows the pharynx, intestine, then it shows the anus. So, when you will look at the major parts of the digestive system, many organs are together functioning for the physiology of digestion. Hence, it is called organ system grade of body organization. Similarly, the other 
physiological systems will have many organs contributing for the function respectively. The next one is body cover. So, the body of the organisms even though it is cylindrical elongated worm like having the tapered ends both the sides as what we see in the diagram here. It has got a covering over the body uh, skin or epidermis. It is called as generally non cellular non cellular collagenous cuticle. So, this cuticle concept we have learned in the previous class I mean previous session itself under the platyhelminthus. Students remember cuticle is an additional layer secreted by the epidermis below. So, this particular epidermis will secrete above a layer of the non collagenous or non cellular or dead matter of cells which we call it as the cuticle. And because of this cuticle which is multi layered it brings about the flexibility for the worms. You know the worm as it wants to show the locomotion they require the flexibility for the body. So, that flexibility is brought about by this non collagenous dead tissue of cuticle also. So, they not only help gives uh, the protection for the body, so also provides uh, the flexibility for the body during the movement or locomotion. The next important feature is that these organisms have got the cuticle which is provided with the special kind of uh, um, uh, 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 receptive hairs or sensory hairs which we call it as cuticle setae. So, generally setae refers to the additional hair like outgrowths of the body. Here the additional hair growth that are seen on the body is present exactly on the cuticle hence we call them as cuticular setae. So, this cuticular setae are specially men, uh, meant for the process of sensitivity I mean to say the sensation process is brought about by the setae component present on the body. So, it can also have sometimes the spinous process. If the setae is movable, if it is uh, uh, flexible, uh, uh, it is generally called as the setal group. When it becomes foam, when it becomes unmove, I'm sorry, immovable, then that condition we call it as spines. Okay, so we do have certain of the organisms of the uh, uh, nematode showing the movable hairs called the setae and the immovable uh, structures called as the spines also shows the uh, cuticular uh, uh, wrinkles which we call it as annulation. Students when we look at the body of these worms it is uh, it appears as if it has got number of segments, but it is not so internally does not have any segmentation instead the uh, segmentation appearance is due to the presence of the wrinkled uh, uh, cuticle that is present. So, because of that wrinkled cuticle the organism could have the flexibility while, do, uh, while showing the locomotion. So, that is about the body cover called as the cuticle. Then the next important concept is related to the epidermis. So, when we remove the cuticle part of the organism the next immediate part that we find below the cuticle is called the cellular or syncytial epidermis. Students remember the same concept we have learnt with reference to platyhelminthus also. Here syn refers to S Y N syn refers to fusion, cytos refers to cells. So, the cells of the epidermis appears to be as if they are all fused. So, it shows the multinucleated appearance for the cellular layer. So, that is the importance of the syncytial epidermis which is a, a major characteristic feature of all the uh, nematodes. So, the epidermis of all the nematodes is said to be syncytial uh, condition. It is also called a sinocytic or multinucleated. You can see the same in the diagram down in the uh, a slide. Coming on to the body symmetry. As we know symmetry refers to division of the body at either the central vertical axis or central horizontal axis. So, that the mirror images of the body parts or fragments are seen. Here 
the symmetry is called as bilateral symmetry because the axis of division is vertical like what you find for the uh, platyhelminthes students remember right from the phylum platyhelminthes onwards we find the organisms till the cardate showing the symmetry generally referred as bilateral symmetry bi means two lateral means sides symmetry means division so the division after the vertical plane it shows two mirror images of right and left which are similar and hence is called the symmetry as bilateral symmetry so the division or plane of division is also referred as a sagittal plane so here are three important uh, organisms uh, anterior body part of nematodes which can be divided exactly from anterior posterior axis at center to get the mirror images so that is the importance of the nematodes then coming on to the next important concept called as the uh, uh, um, uh, this nematodes are called as triploblastic uh, organisms so this triploblasticity is referring to the parts or the germ layers from which the body of the organism is formed so here in case of uh, uh, nematodes the three germ layers during the embryonic stages involves in the formation of the body overall so such body is rare of the organism is also referred as triploblastic condition okay a triploblastic body so here the tri, tri means three or triplo means three blasto refers to germ layers three germ layers involves in the formation of the body of nematodes hence it is called as triploblastic condition here you can see the first outer layer is called i mean the blue color a layer we call it as the ectoderm uh, the pink color layer um, uh, in the middle called mesoderm and yellow color layer inside is called endoderm so the overall body of the organism is formed from this three germ layers so towards the most uh, uh, right extremity you find the diagram of the round worm showing the uh, cross section indicating the three germ layer involves in the formation of the body of the organism the next is the body of the organism below the epidermis it shows presence of muscles students remember there are four bands or groups of muscles seen and all muscles belongs to one particular type called as longitudinal muscles longitudinal the term includes the term long l o n g long which refers to placing the uh, uh, muscle bands or main muscle uh, fibers in a vertical position in an elongated manner so the cross section of the same of the body of the organism shows four bands here towards the left side towards the right side you find the body of the organism showing those uh, longitudinal mu muscles alone so the body of nematodes is made up of only longitudinal muscles there are no other special muscles involved then next important feature of this longitudinal muscle is that they are responsible for the contraction and relaxation of the body parts so that the organism can have the flexibility during the movement so the movement of the body is also dependent on the activity of longitudinal muscles so that is contraction and relaxation of muscles so that's important that is the importance of the musculature of the body of organisms excuse me the next important feature is related to the body silo students remember in platyhelminthes between the body wall and the alimentary canal or the body organs there was no space at all seen but in this group of organisms a space is seen between the body wall and the inner alimentary canal but that space is said to be perivisceral silo because it is not separated by means of the lining of mesoderm generally in the previous sessions that we have learnt uh, uh, related to the silom concept is that 
Coelom is the cavity or the space present between or formed between outer body wall and the inner alimentary canal. If this space need to be separated, there should be a lining of mesoderm. Okay, this should be splitting of mesoderm. So, if mesoderm lining is seen for the cavity, we call it as um, a true coelom. But here in case of the nematodes, the lining is absent. And also, it is referred as the perivisceral coelom. And this is the space where you find the fluid matter gets filled. So, the space is not kept as an empty space. Instead, it will be filled with some fluid matter, sometimes even some cells of a parenchyma. And in between this uh, fluid matter or parenchymatous cells, you find some of the organs placed. So, you have the cavity, cavity is not lined by the mesoderm and the cavity will be filled with the fluid or parenchymatous tissue and in between this cavity, we also find the presence of certain of the organs. So, when organs are present within the coelom, we call it as perivisceral coelom and this kind of coelom which is not a true cavity filled with the fluid matter or parenchymatous tissue we call it a pseudo -silo, a very special character related to nematodes. Pseudo refers to false. Silo is the body cavity. The body cavity is called as a black, I mean a false body cavity and it is developed from the blastocele of the organism. Remember because of the development of the body cavity called the silo from the blastocele which is not a true cavity but filled with the fluid or parenchymatous tissue we call it as pseudo coelom remember students the organisms of nematodes are i mean will have pseudo coelom in it a special character related to nematodes of all the animal phyla or uh, uh, we find only the nematode showing this character of pseudo coelom the next important feature is related to the cephalization. As we know, cephalus refers to head. Formation of head is called a cephalization. Here in this uh, 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 nematode, we do not find a specific part of head as a structure which is visible to us. So, it is invisible uh, uh, head like structure is present in this organisms. Hence, we can say distinct head is lacking, it is absent. But internally, they will have the parts related to the cephalization. You remember, I told in the last session, cephalization should have formation of brain structure within and outside the sensory organs related. We do have this organisms of nematodes showing the character having the brain development inside and outside the sensory organs. Remember students, the sensory organs and their position plays a wide, uh, vital role, means it's an important role uh, in the uh, uh, process of classification of the nematodes. So, to divide or to classify nematodes, this characteristic feature of sensory organs and their position matters. In case of uh, nematodes, we have two groups of nematodes, okay, we have two classes of nematodes. Some group of nematodes will have presence of the sensory structures in their anterior end, okay, where the brain is present. Whereas in some other group of nematodes, we find the sensory structures which are visible to us towards the posterior end. So, we have sensory organs, some showing at the anterior end, some showing at posterior end. If they show towards anterior end, we call them as the amphids. You remember, it? easy to remember the concept is A for A, amphids for anterior. So, the term amphi means double. These organisms will show anterior olf uh, uh, olfactory and sensory organs uh, uh, in the organisms. So, if they are present to its anterior side, we call them as amphids. 
Similarly, towards posterior side also sometimes this uh, uh, um, sensory organs are seen. They are called as phasmids. So we have amphids and phasmids. Amphids are seen towards anterior end, phasmids are seen towards posterior end. So when I say syphilization, it refers to much of amphid group of organisms of nematodes because at anterior end head is seen which is not distinct outside but internally shows the brain and the sensory organs related. So down is a diagram showing the amphid structure in the nematode of uh, uh, a phasmid. A means absent, phasmida means the posterior structure or also referred as amphid structure. Coming on to the next uh, important system called digestive system. Students remember digestive system here is called as complete. It has got distinct mouth and anus at two ends of anterior and posterior sides. The digestive system of the organism is tubular, it is tube like. When we look at the organism outside it is also appear, uh, appears to be the cylindrical or tube like. <coughs> Excuse me. So, when you take a section of the um, organism, you can find the outer body of the organism showing a tube within uh, which is nothing but the digestive tract. <coughs> so, the alimentary canal within the body of the animal appears to be a tube within another tube. Are you able to follow? So, tube within another tube arrangement is what exactly you find for the digestive system here in case of nematodes. And it shows uh, sensory structures in their mouth which are referred as the lips. In few cases the number may range between 2 to 6. The next important part of uh, behind the mouth is the pharynx. <coughs> the pharynx here in case of the digestive system of nematode is very special because it is made up of a very huge number of muscles. So, muscular pharynx is another characteristic feature related to nematodes, indicating the higher uh, activity of the pharynx. So, behind the mouth is the pharynx, behind the pharynx lies the uh, gut or the intestine. Students remember the intestine or the gut of the organism shows non-ciliated epithelial lining inside. Generally, <coughs> excuse me, the ciliated lining of the epithelium inside the uh, gut helps in two important functions. One is the movement of the food, I mean uh, 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 of digestion. The second is also helps in absorption. So here the gut is non-ciliated. As we know, most of these organisms directly feed on the digested food. There is no requirement of the ciliated epithelium much. <coughs> okay, and the digestion is both of intracellular and extracellular. Extracellular digestion is seen well in these organisms that is within the tubular alimentary canal. We have understood that. Uh, free living forms like uh, uh, Cynorhabditis elegans, it feeds on the microbes, especially bacteria present in that decomposing uh, plant vegetation. If it is a parasite, it will directly take in the food, the, the digested food of the host itself. Coming on to the circulatory and respiratory systems, both are absent in them, system as such it does not have, but respiration occurs through the body. Uh, surface um, by the help of uh, uh, diffusion. It is commonly seen well in uh, uh, free living forms of organisms by aerobic respiration where oxygen is uh, involved and absence of air, uh, I mean oxygen in the air can also be seen in anaerobic uh, forms where parasitic organisms are involved. The next important feature is excretory system. So, we have understood that excretory system refers to the system which is involved in the removal of the excretory waste. 
mainly the water carbon dioxide. These organisms also have special kind of excretory structures as how we have kidneys in us. Similar way, they have a special kind of cells called as renate cells, a very special feature of nematodes again. Students remember, renate cells are special kind of cells present in the excretory system of the nematodes. Towards the right side of the slide, you have a representation of the renate cell. It will have a head shaped canal showing the renate cell attached. Okay. The excretory system of nematode shows the renate cells attached to the head shaped canal uh, of excretion, we call it as excretory canal. And this excretory canal will open outside through the excretory pore. So, that is the importance of excretory system in case of the organism. Remember, what do you call the special kind of cells present in the excretory system of nematodes? Renate cells. Now, coming on to the next system called nervous system. The sensitivity, uh, sensitivity activity or sensor activity of the body is controlled by the common coordinating system called as the nervous system. Here, the nervous system has got a ring shaped circumpharyngeal ring made up of many number of neurons. Students remember during the course of evolution, the shape of the brain is getting modified. In case of platyhelminthes, it was inverted V shaped from which two longitudinal nerve cuts were arising, one towards right, the other one towards left towards ventral, okay, uh, ventral side of the body. Here, the organisms of nematodes will have circumpharyngeal, a round shaped uh, um, a ring like brain is present. It is called circumpharyngeal ring, nothing but the brain structure. Circum refers to round, pharyngeal refers to the pharynx, a ring refers to again a circular structure. So, ring of nerve that surrounds the pharynx is called circumpharyngeal ring, from which arises the longitudinal nerve cords ventrally. So, you have generally the dorsal nerve cord and a ventral nerve cord. Two nerve cords arises from the circumpharyngeal ring that moves towards the posterior side. Down in the diagram, you can see the pharynx is surrounded by that red colored structure called circumpharyngeal ring that shows two elongated longitudinal nerve rings, I am sorry, nerve cords that moves towards the posterior side. Remember, the dorsal and ventral nerve cords are connected by means of the transverse commutures, okay, which will coordinate with the body activities or the um, uh, functions. Coming on to the sensor, uh, sensory organs, we know that nervous system is present, but there are also an organ, I mean the organs which are related to the sensory activities. These organs are not that well developed in case of the nematodes because they are restricted to only one particular place. As we have discussed early, if some particular uh, sensory organs are seen towards the anterior end which we call it as amphids, some at posterior end which we call it as phasmids. So, the diagram down towards left side shows amphids indicating the presence of the sensory organs towards anterior end, towards posterior end you find in case of phasmids down in, uh, towards the left side. Students remember both have got sensory activities. Amphids have got the sensory activity of olfaction. Olfaction refers to smell. Okay. So, they are the sensory organs for uh, having the smell of the food. Whereas, the phasmids are chemosensory in function, they are sensory uh, uh, for the chemicals. So, organisms of amphids need to be present in case of free living organisms because they need to sensitize the food availability. Whereas, the phasmids need to be present at a, a posterior end to have the a sensitivity of chemicals and that is commonly seen in case of the parasites because they live in a, another organism of the host uh, 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 called the host 
and there the host organism produces varieties of chemicals and that chemical environment the organism need to live and survive. So phasmids are helpful there in providing the chemosensory activities whereas amphids are related to the mouth which are responsible for the olfactory functions. So in simple terms to remember this uh, uh, concept easily amphids are related to the mouth phasmids are related to the tail that is anus. Coming into the next important concept that is reproduction <coughs> excuse me. For the first time in the animal kingdom in nematodes we find the separation between male and female organisms. When we look at the organisms externally you can easily define them or differentiate them into male and female category. So this condition we call it as sexual dimorphism. So sexes are separate, males are uh, separate from that of females. Okay. So in case of platyhelminthes we have understood that the organisms are hermaphrodites, bisexual organisms, but here they are monosexual organisms. Males are separate from that of the females. They show gonochoristic condition. Gono refers to the organs, choristic here refers to differentiation. Males will have the testes, females will have the ovaries in them. So there is demarcation. However, are the males and females to appear are to be males generally are said to be smaller with a curved posterior end. It will have a hook like end down in the diagram here you can find the first picture is of the male Ascaris where the posterior end is curved like a hook the tail which we call it as cecum. Here the females are said to have a longer body okay they have a long body and their posterior end is blunt or striped. Males shows a special structure at posterior end called as cloaca a new term again that we need to understand here. Cloaca refers to the common opening through which the organism will throw the undigested waste that is the anus will open there. Also the organism will show the presence of um, the reproductive organ or the systems will open into the same space. So a common way through which the digestive, I mean undigested uh, food or the waste comes out and through the same space or the uh, opening even the reproductive cells also comes out, the gametic cells also comes out. So when we find a common place through our opening through which the digestive waste as well as the reproductive cells comes out we call it as cloaca. Students remember males will show presence of cloaca. Okay. So cloaca is present in case of males. In case of females cloaca is absent. So anus is seen separately and the reproductive system opens outside through the opening called as gonopore. So if you keenly observe in the diagram, I am sorry the picture down towards the left side, the second picture refers to, I am sorry, the second uh, organism refers to the female showing gonopore almost at the mid body towards the ventral side, whereas the anus is to, uh, seen towards the posterior end. So there is separation of the opening of digestive system and reproductive system namely the anus and gonopore seen for the organisms of females whereas in case of males both remain same which we call it as cloaca. Now the males will produce the special kind of uh, sperm cells or the sex cells which are of amoeboid shape. So amoeboid sperm cells are special features related to the uh, males here. Coming on to the fertilization, 
it is called internal fertilization where male gametes enter into the body of the females and there within the body of the female the male gametes and female gametes undergo fusion so when the fusion of male and female gametes occurs within the body of the organism we call it as internal fertilization it may be self fertilization or cross fertilization when can we call the fertilization as self no doubt male and female gametes are fusing within the same organism okay and um, we are saying it is cross fertilization here the term self and cross fertilization is related to the organisms of cnorhabditis elegans okay there in that case of the animal we have the organisms of hermaphroditic conditions existing I mean to say male and female uh, reproductive organs are present or gonads are present in the same animal so that category of organisms of cnorhabditis are also available in that organism cross or self fertilization is seen what do you mean by self fertilization male gametes female gametes of the same animal will fuse in the body of the organism in cross fertilization sperms of the different organisms are taken inside for the fertilization process so fertilization of self and cross is related to the organisms of hermaphrodite whereas the other organisms rest of nematode shows gender a uh, internal fertilization <coughs> now development is said to be direct in few cases indirect in few other cases indirect development is commonly seen with the help of uh, uh, the host organisms so parasites will show most of the time the indirect development down in the picture you can find uh, uh, different uh, uh, um, diagrams so showing the development of ascaris okay the round the common round worm now after we understanding the general characteristic features of platyhelminthes students remember very special characters related to i'm sorry uh, uh, nematodes is that sorry nematodes is that number one they are uh, pseudocoelomates okay number 2 they have syncytial epidermis with a cuticle outside number 3 they do have muscular pharynx number 4 they have nerve ring which is surrounding the pharynx called as the circumpharyngeal nerve ring from which arises dorsal and ventral nerve cords number 5 sexes are separate and shows sexual dimorphism okay diamonds to morphomens external externally males and females can be separable okay so these few characters we need to remember may as a different or special characters related to nematodes you don't have in your syllabus classification of phylum platyhelminthes but uh, for our understanding we shall understand it because we need to know the examples okay examples as i told you earlier the classification of nematodes is based on the sensory structures which are positioned on the body if the sensory structures are seen towards the anterior side we call them as the amphids so those group of amphids comes under adenophoria or aphasmidia group so the class 1 group of nematode uh, uh, organisms includes amphid sensory uh, organs for example here is the trichinella students remember trichinella is a parasite which is seen in a uh, road and pigs and even in human beings which causes a disease called as uh, trichinosis um it is a condition where the heart of the organisms and then uh, uh, will be affected and then it causes the breathing problems in the organisms and uh, leads to death upon infection so that's the importance of this group so class 1 group of uh, platyhelminthes includes the organisms and the class is called aphasmidia or adenophoria adenomens gland foro refers to bare amens absent phasmos refers to uh, without without the phasmids 
FS media. So sensory arguments towards posterior side are absent. It otherwise means amphids are present. So animals with the amphid sensory organs which are responsible for the alfacto sensory activity in nematodes come under this category of FAS media. The second class is called FAS media or Caesarenentia. So this particular group or FAS media includes the animals that shows FASMIDs. FASMIDs as we know they are the sensory structures present towards the posterior end indicating the chemo uh, uh, reception function. It includes the organisms of and excuse me and cyclostoma which is uh, uh, which is commonly called as hookworm uh, seen in the host animals like the intestine of man then dogs cats etc causing the problems related to the uh, um, intestine like diarrhea malnutrition huh, etc then hookworm we call it as and cyclostoma then Ucheraria, as we have understood, this is the organism which causes uh, lymphatic uh, filariasis. Then Ascaris, which causes the infection of intestine. Then Cenorhabditis elegans or Rhabditis organism, uh, which is a, a, a soil nematode, a free living soil nematode that is seen amidst the decomposing vegetation. So they all have the structures called as fascinating. Now. You may have a doubt, students. Cenorhabditis elegans, it's a free living organism. So it should have fast media, I mean, sorry, fast meats in it, as well as amphids in it, right? Then it should be a common organism that should fall under a fast media and fast media, isn't it? But here, fast meat structure, presence and absence is the criterion for this classification. If it is present, we will have to include them under fast media group. If it is absent only, then we will be including that in the uh, FAS media. Okay? So remember that concept. So down is a diagram related to Ascaris. The curved or hook like uh, structure you can find for the males which is small in size compared to the female which is longer, larger and with a blunt end, straight end. So with this we are completing the general characteristic features as well as the classification with examples related to nematelminthes or nematoda. Now we shall test how much exactly we have learned the concept by looking at few of the uh, MCQs and answering them. One of the following characteristic is not correct of nematoda which is not related to nematoda. Elongated cylindrical body it is related. Fixed number of cells, remember students, the body of the uh, 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 nematodes have the condition of fixed number of cells with reference to these systems. Uh, for example, the digestive system when we look at it will have the fixed number of cells of particular organ. That is also another characteristic feature of them. Then they are pseudocylomates, they have pseudocylo. Then they are hermoprodites, do we have? All nematodes are showing hermoproditism, no except for Cerorhabditis elegans, rest of all the organisms comes in there, um, um, monoecious group. So answer is C, hermoproditism, it is not related to nematodes. Next, name the animal group with pseudo, uh, pseudocilome in it, name the phylum with pseudocilome. So we have learned nematodes, answer is again C. The process of morphological differentiating of males and female sexes. Sex is the term which refers to scientifically differentiate. So we can differentiate male and female organisms at this phenomenon if it is uh, uh, taking place by looking at the external features, externally by looking at the features or visible characters if we could differentiate them into males and females we call it as sexual dimorphism. So answer is A, sexual dimorphism. The musculature of Ascaris consists of, so what type of muscles are present in the organisms? It is only longitudinal muscles, so answer is D. Next, 
ascaris has dash type of cells in their excretory system. What do you call the excretory cells of the uh, uh, ascaris or nematodes? Renate cells. So, answer is C. Beneath the cuticle in case of ascaris, ascaris is an example of nematode. Found the hypodermis which is called as hypomis below. So, below the cuticle, what layer do you find? You call it as syncytial epidermis, answer is B. Well, students, what have we learnt in today's class? We have understood the characteristics of nematodes and we also have a, a, a learned what are the organisms of parasite, uh, parasitic and uh, um, non-parasitic or helpful nematodes present uh, in the phylum the characters related to it. Students you can refer the following uh, websites of Wikipedia and Britannica .com and books related to uh, this particular concept is Invertebrate Zoology by P. S. Verma and Verma and Agarwal also then Modern Textbook of Zoology by Kotpal. Thank you all students. Hope you have understood the concept. Your queries and comments you can write it to my personal WhatsApp number and uh, uh, take care of yourselves during this pandemic time. Keep uh, take care of your health also. Thank you all. Thank you all.